what is up, Internet? I'm here with my friend Dustin Bailey, a uh, former military member, right? Former military. Uh, served his country. Good friend of mine. Uh, also a realtor at Patterson Realty, LLC. Yeah, man. Yes, now, who is this right here? Bailey and Sons. That's, uh, just a little handyman service. That we is this you also? Started. Yes, sir. Okay, so multiple business owner, uh, entrepreneurial spirit. I, I've known the guy a long time. Very super polite person. Uh, also the uh, owner? Yes, sir. At Bailey and Sons Handyman Service. As a veteran owned and operated, 256-609-9244. I'll type that on here in a little bit. Uh, they do home repair, lawn care, everything in between. Why did you decide to start this business also? Well, I, I just... I really don't like working for other people. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Oh, you're you're kidding me. Uh, that's awesome, man. I've tried uh, it over and over and over, and it just never it works. does not work because they boss you around and they're not nice. Uh, Dustin's gonna help me uh clean my a uh, few of my firearms today. I'm not super super educated on that. I've actually never cleaned them short of wiping them down, and uh, I've been having some trouble with my AR. And he's gonna he's gonna walk me through how to do it and teach me how to do that. Do you think, uh, Dustin, you can run, you do whatever you want to do. You're the you're the boss um, now. First thing we're going to do, anytime you're cleaning a firearm, just make sure it's safe. It's all safe. Point in the safe direction. And we're going to check and make sure that it's not loaded. Amen. Yes. So, <clears throat> I'll get some towels out so I don't dirty up your, uh, your desk here. Nice, clean desk you got. Oh, yeah. Well, well I built it out of Lowe's. Yeah, I bought uh, the the pipes and they uh they threaded them. I bought the wood; it was cheap wood. And then a buddy of mine put a little bit of sealant on it. And uh, I mean, I had to frame it to the floor. You can feel it; it's not the most sturdy thing in the world. It used to be a lot worse, man. <laughs> it used to be a lot crazier. I'm gonna share this to uh, YouTube while I'm sitting here. But uh, yeah, we probably won't talk near as much this time. But Dustin's gonna be walking you through how to do everything because I uh, don't know how to do it, and he's doing me a favor by coming out and helping the boy out. Uh, I've been having trouble with my AR jamming, and I knew, I knew I haven't cleaned them. I knew I had not cleaned them, and I was like, uh, "I gotta, I gotta call somebody." And then I, I got with Dustin. I was like, "Hey, man, can you help me?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Thanks, man." Hey, anything to do with guns, I'm all in. I dig it, man. Uh, first thing you do after you make sure it's safe, you get these little pins right here on an AR. Anyway, you pop those, press them right here, you'll flip it over, and you'll see that they're popped out a little bit. Pull them up. You can. I take take it completely apart. What? Well, field strip, not completely apart. Now, why is it called a field strip? Because it's just something you can do in the field. Wow. Just a quick, pretty much get all the the main necessary parts. You have to get something done. Pry that open. When were you in the military? Uh, two thousand. Joined two thousand five to thirteen. I got gotcha. you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess with your mica hair. There we go. And it should be able to pick you up a little better just talking with your head being back. <clears throat> Say hello to me, boss man. What's up? There you go. Now we got you that way because while you're working and stuff. Bam, bam, bam. It did take me a little time to learn all this. I bet. It's a lot of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But once we got it, it was it was about gravy. Once you pop these pins, you can pop just the – I'll show you. Just the back one. And I do want to do this again because, uh, again, I thought you weren't going to come on today. I want to do this again uh, sometime with maybe a couple of your guns. We set up just a camera, and yeah. we, we let you do it to where I can go above head so they can see you. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be cool. But go ahead. I'm listening. But you can pop both these out, and then you can leave this forward one, this front one popped out, uh, pushed in so that it, you don't take it all the way apart. Oh, God. But so right there is the lower and the upper. Then – from there, you just pull the charging handle. The bolt will slide right out. Here's the bolt. Vicky, he has took it. He's taken my gun apart. Charging handle. Let's Anything see. you need to sit anywhere else, you do it. I know we're a little cramped in here. And then right here, you have the lower. You've got a little pin right here. You just take the charging handle, pop it. Yeah, it's dirty for sure. Pop that down. So you can tell right away it's dirty. Oh, yeah. And the buffer tube. They usually are, especially if you haven't cleaned it. Show me what you mean when you see that you know it's dirty in a second. Ah. Oh, I haven't okay. even touched the, and that, the internal parts Will yet. that stop it from firing? Uh, I mean, if it gets too dirty, it will. Okay. 
Oh, Mine's been it has been it normally never jammed, but then like I shot it like seven, eight times. So there's well now you gotta take apart the bolt. That's basically a field strip. That's wild. And you have this little thing right here. Pushes in and out. You got a pin right here. If I can get to it. Why did you decide to go to the military? Uh 911. You got that fired was, up. That was the main I mean, at the time. So how old were you when that happened? How old are you uh, now? I was in ninth, ninth grade Yeah. when 9-11 happened, okay. and I am 36. I didn't know you were that much older than me. I'm 30. I didn't know you were that much younger than me. I'm 30. <laughs> I, th I didn't know you were 36. I didn't know that. That's kind of why you're probably so laid back. But one, We did work at the jail together. You were a super nice person there. And I tell people all the time there was like two people that was nice to me, three people. You're one of those three. It was you, Hannah, and uh, uh, Tim. I try to be nice to everybody till they give me a reason not to be. For sure. And I never gave a reason. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. How is Tim? I don't know. I, I mean, I've got him on Facebook. I see, I've see. i seen him post and stuff from time to time. As far as I know, he's... I feel Pretty like good. he's a very I he retired. I think he's a very nice person. Oh, I yeah. liked him. He had good energy. I remember when he made them hot dogs all the time. Oh yeah. yeah. Always buying food. I liked he him. He was definitely my favorite sergeant. Yeah, hundred percent. I liked him for sure. But that's pretty much it. Right here, stripped down. You got firing pin, the bolt, charging <laughs> handle, buffer tube. I've never seen a firing pin. If he was like, he ain't a man, I've never seen a firing pin. So that makes it shoot. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't have this in it. It doesn't. It doesn't go boom. Nope. Parts hey, ain't put back together. It don't work right. I didn't know that. I figured it'd be. I don't know what I thought it was gonna be. But I got some some stuff here. Clean it up pretty good. See if it'll help you out. Get it lubed up. Yeah, the man. How did you get into the realty? Why'd you do that? Uh, mainly for I got into it. Uh, the guy that I work for, Craig Patterson, he was my realtor, and we thought we sold. Uh, we sold our house in Dutton with him and we bought a house with him and he was just super nice guy. Really, really good person. And, um, <clears throat> he said, I were to look into it and, um, I got, I mainly got into it was for, uh, more of the, uh, freedom yeah. instead of the nine to five, you know, typical job, not having to work for people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not having to work for people. That's the main I actually did that. Thing. Is it stressful getting with people on the homes or is it normally just pretty gravy? I love it. That's my yeah. favorite part. I like I like the buying side a lot better than I do the the selling side. I mean, I like both of them. Now, but. you've showed us a few houses and I have been unable to buy a house right now because I can't find a way to, to do it. How are people affording houses right now? Because it is, it seems like a crazy market. And it's a hard question, right? But it's a question. How are they, how, how are they doing that? Uh, I mean, they just, make real people. Don't you dare say they make real people money. No. I'm I trying to make real that. people money, Dustin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but, I, the first time, I mean, if it wasn't for the VA loan, I wouldn't, I probably still wouldn't own a house myself. Wow. I mean, I would, I guess I would, but I wouldn't, it would have been a lot longer before I owned my, owned my first house. It, I want to say it was like right around 25. Um, I bought my first house in twenty five thousand. No, twenty five years old. Oh, okay. I bought my first house, but I got it with a VA loan. I mean, okay. it's no money down. Um, you can roll your uh, closing costs and stuff like that into the loan, so that you're literally getting a house and you're not paying a cent. Oh, I like that. Um, but for people that's not in the military or not not doesn't have access to a VA loan, it's a little bit harder. You gotta have money down. I mean, they have programs like FHA and stuff like that where it's a lot less money down. But then you gotta you run into the problem of um, they gotta meet certain standards. The with the the house does the VA loan. Well, like the FHA VA oh, okay. VA VA's uh it's my favorite loan. I mean I love working with them. Um, but what's the FHA loan? FHA loan is just like it's kind of like a little government loan. It's just less money down. I'm trying to explain it like like yeah, yeah. terms. Yeah. Um, Usually, you know, usually a typical conventional loan at a bank, just a regular bank, is like 20% down. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> sorry, I get sidetracked. Can't do two things at once. No, that's hard. But uh, it, it, so you got like 20% down. So, you know, it's a good chunk of change if your house is $200,000. Yeah. You got to have it down. FHA is it's like a government type loan that you can, it's like 5% or I didn't know that. 5 to 10%. You can just apply for them. I got a bunch of different programs like that. If I wanted to build a home, could I do the FHA loan or no? I don't. 
think so. I don't I don't deal it's with a lot of home. building homes. I got so you, I got you. <clears throat> I don't think that I mean, I know there's programs out there for building. Do you think the market's gonna get better? <clears throat> it always will. Yeah. Is it, it, it a market's just like a market for anything anything else? It's gonna go up and down. I got you. So now I, I understand how like selling houses work. You'll get a percentage when you sell a home. I understand how sales work, right? Mm -hmm. So like with that being said, the cost of living right now. Is it better for you for the houses to be cheaper or like it is right now? Like, granted, I understand you would make more money right now, but also the cost of living being insane like it is right now. I would see it not making. See, what I'm trying to I say. I try not to look at it like that. Like, I'm going to, you know, of course I'm in it to make money. Have to be. Um, I'm not saying I'm doing it for free, but I try to look at it as, as I'm making money while I'm helping somebody. So, you know, if it's a 50, like if they're that. looking for a $50,000 house and that's what we're going to find, if they're looking for a $500,000 house and that's what we're going to find. I like that. I just, I mainly base it off what the customer needs. I like that. What I'm going to do is I can't share this video to Facebook while we're live because, you, you know, the algo rhythm. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put, go to, uh, I'm going to share the uh, YouTube page. I had I put Covenant Eyes on my phone. That way I can't watch uh you know P O R N because that's a I think a real problem in the world and it's definitely been a problem for me. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm not watching that now. <clears throat> uh, I feel like I'm going through not withdrawals. I feel like, but I can tell like I'm not doing a thing that I've normally done. If that makes sense. Uh, I think that's I've a real. A, I, go ahead. I've seen a lot of studies and stuff where it it kills your testosterone. Yeah, melts your brain, kills your testosterone, no, makes, along with many other things. Yeah, it makes you makes you think just weird, awful, terrible, horrible stuff. And like the first time I saw it, I saw it from my uncle, and uh, not from my uncle. Like it was in my great uncle's room, and like that was when I was like five. So I'm I'm trying to keep my kids as far away from anything even similar to that. I don't want them knowing that's a, a thing. I got one page. We're calling. I feel like the as much of the world as we can protect our kids from, the uh, better. The better. The way it is nowadays. Now that it's not like when we grew up. It's, no, it's a completely different world. And, and, and it's it was crazy because it's rough been when like, we were growing up. Yeah, I mean it was, but I mean I guess social media's got a lot to do with it. It's a great thing, and I mean it can be a great thing. I, I use it for business, and it's free. So do you? Yeah, yeah, it's free, free advertisement. But I don't know. I guess just everybody being in everybody's business constantly all the time. I don't know. That makes it it's hard. something. <clears throat> something that, that happened now that we didn't have when we were kids that's for sure yeah at all what i'm gonna do <clears throat> that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna copy that Bam. i love this stuff right here <clears throat> got it online it's called uh shooter lube shooter lube yeah i like it uh but it works great but you can use really any any kind of gun oil you can get from walmart or tactical shop anywhere really online <clears throat> i seen the advertisement for this stuff and just bought it just to try it out and it's probably been one of my favorite gun cleaning solvents the shooter lube both of them shooter lube or no mm -hmm. Shoot, yeah both shooter lube that's gun oil and this is just a cleaning solvent now what does cleaning solvent do it the oil i can about make makes breaks sense. down the carbon and the stuff that builds up after you fire why is carbon building up more <clears throat> Now that I don't know, I'm not. I don't get into the technical okay. stuff of it, but I know that. I mean, it builds up from the the explosion from the gunpowder, pushes the bullet out, and every time you shoot, it builds up a little bit more, especially around the little star here. Yeah, you'll find a lot. I'll show you right here. I sprayed that solvent on it. I'll yeah, stick this that. rag in here and just touch it. <clears throat> See what I mean? Oh, that's why. And I just, I mean, I barely just touched it. That's awful. <clears throat> but I, no, yours is not nowhere near as bad as I've seen some. Some is mine. I'm bad about not cleaning my own guns. But yours ain't jam. Mine's jamming. That's usually when I start cleaning them. When they start to jam, I'm like, oh, I guess it's time for a cleaning. I can't tell because uh, on the Grapevine Facebook, it's kind of weird. Is that you right there? That's you right there. That Dustin Bailey in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Thought so. I was Picture making... of me and my wife. Yeah, I can't. I can't see that from there. Can you say firearms on Facebook? I don't know. You can't say anything, really. Head to the album. We've got to say <laughs> some stuff, man. But I think the way it works on Facebook is like we're, we're, we're listed as a as a news page. Now, I'm not saying they couldn't ban us or block us or nothing, but I assume by this point we've been reported. 
probably an astounding amount of oh, times. I imagine so. We haven't got so much as a warning. Yeah. Nothing. No Everybody warning. Everybody I know that deals with firearms ends up getting Facebook jail. Well, or, now we haven't put no firearms on Facebook yeah, either. That's why I said I might get you canceled. Well, what I'm going to put is head to the Alabama Grapevine YouTube page for interview with Dustin Bailey on how to clean your home defense tools. Your tools. Yeah. How That's to all they are. I'm just, just going to put tools. Yeah, your tools. On how to clean your tools. Head to the Alabama Grapevine YouTube page for any for our live Dustin Bailey on how to clean your tools. It's no different than a knife or a screwdriver. No, it's kind of like it's a, a tool for a certain purpose. Yeah, it's kind of like how to train your dragon, but how to clean your tools. <laughs> Have you watched that movie? Oh, I got six kids. Man. Dude, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's probably one of my favorite uh, animated movies. Oh, it's great. I love it. We watch it. With, we've watched one, two, and now three with the kids. We've ran through all of them. I think we're getting a live action. Oh, yeah. They've, they've, uh, We've seen them all numerous times. Okay. And, and they've I got, thought the second one was the best one. I think they've got like it's great. Maybe like shorts. Okay. Or something that I, maybe I don't know. I might be thinking of a different one, but my kids watch so much of that stuff that that's pretty much all that's ever on our at our house. It's how to train dragon. I love it. I, or, I think it's so wholesome and nice and good. Yeah. Uh, so why did you decide to have so many kids and they're going to have more? No, I don't know about having any more. Okay. But um, now is that you or mom? No, we. It was just it's a, a group effort. Kind of a, kind of just happened. Thing. Might be that time. Uh, I always wanted growing up. I always said I wanted two kids, a boy and a girl. Yeah. And then my wife, she didn't want any children when ah. she was, you know, a teenager, and she ended up having six. And she's the best mom you could ask for. That's beautiful. <clears throat> she's an amazing mom. That's how I mean. She devotes her life to it. That's all she does. Is she takes care of the kids and and I say that's all she does. That's not. All, I mean. That is probably the one of the hardest jobs out in there. In the world. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I'll tell you, if my oh. wife said, hey, let me go to work and you mm. get a stay home dad, I'd be like, no, I'm good. No, I got it. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I love my kids. Look at that. Goodness. This one, just the charging handle. Good God. Well, now, well, charging handle, that's just what racks it. Mm -hmm. Bam. Now, I say, some people say you shouldn't say rack and you shouldn't say clip. Uh, well, that's military terms. The clip. I don't say clip. Uh, uh, it's a magazine. Okay. But I don't get into all that. Man. That kind of seems a little. That seems a little gatekeeperish yeah, for me. We live in a free country. Call it what you want. It go boom boom. Yeah. You know, I got a mag. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a technical term. A magazine is is what goes in the AR or uh, a Glock or any kind of semi-auto. A magazine. Yeah, it's a magazine with bullets in it. A okay. clip. The difference is, is a clip like in World War Two. A lot of World War Two guns, like M1 Grand. Okay. You had a stripper clip. Okay. And so it would pop open. You would take the stripper clip that had like eight bullets on it, and you would push the bullets down, and the clip would come out. See, that's wild. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's cool. That's the the military. That's why people get so been out of shape over it. Which I mean, I don't know. They're gatekeeping. They're yeah. gatekeeping. Now, now I heard. Now I don't know if this is true. It what what's the ball on the top of the uh, the White House? Is the White House is it on the flag? There's a ball on the top of the flag. Is it on the top of the flag on the White I'm House? Not sure. I mean, I know you talking about the big dome. Yeah, but there's a – so someone told us – I was in – when I was – so I went to boot camp, but not like serve my country boot camp like you did. I got like, in trouble. In trouble boot camp. Yeah, I got in trouble and got sent to kid I probably wasn't far off when I was a teenager. It, it's called a truck. You know what the truck is? Mm -hmm. This guy might have been lying to us then. He said, he said there's a ball. On, it, it was either on the top of the White House or it's on the top of the flag on the top of the White House. He said there's a – it's called a truck. And inside the truck is one bullet, one razor blade, and shot the hilts. And he said the, the bullet is if you're the last like American, the, the 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 razor blade is to cut the stars out of the flag or something crazy. I think I've heard that. Okay, is that I, true or is that I, a lie? Because like know you if were it's in the, true or not. The, why would they not tell you all that and tell us that? I don't know. They they may have. It's been so many years. I, I didn't retain everything I was told in the military, that's for sure. What's the craziest thing you were told in the military? Like, and I don't mean like do something crazy. I mean like Hey, idiot, do the push-ups or like something wild. Tell, you got anything yeah. like that or was it just, I, I just better do the push-ups? No, it's pretty much just do what you're told to do. That's how it was I in mean, boot camp. You say, you see a lot of these people, oh, I wouldn't go to basic training. I could go to basic training. I'd punch a drill sergeant in the face. Mm, did you? Like, well, punch him. Do it. Yeah. Do it. I mean, I mean, you might get away with it. I mean, yeah. you're not going to get away with it. <laughs> you might could do it. And yeah. You might you might could take old boy. But yeah. <clears throat> those guys are trained pretty And you're, you're going to catch a well. charge. 
Oh yeah. And you're gonna catch a charge. It'd be like hitting a referee or Done. something. Done. I'd be like hitting a cop. A, I'd be like hitting you, a cop. You see MJ don't play no games either. No, they're what's a lot you, different than it's what's, the uh uniform code of military justice. Yeah, yeah, it's you're, their, their laws. You're doing some time. Yeah. You're gonna do a little time. They don't play no games. You go to life in prison for some drugs. Yeah. Really? <clears throat> I mean, I think I think there's there's laws on the books and, and I I'm no professional at UCMJ. Yeah. MJ. I think I'm pretty sure like with certain drug charges you can I think it carries a max sentence of life at Leavenworth. Oh god. What kind of drugs? I, I don't know. Surely not a, some serious like cocaine or Yeah, I mean, surely like, not a joint serious for the military. Now, how bad is Leavenworth? 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 I don't know. It's a military prison. Sounds kinda awful. I ain't never been there. So where all did you get to go? I've been I got a cousin that was in the mil- in the Marines. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, uh, I can't remember. Math- Matthew Collins, he was in the Marines. He, I do that all the time. Faces I get, bro. Blank. Faces I got easy, I'm bro. The same way. Names is hard, and then the, the extra problem is I know a lot of people, so it's like my thing. What I'll do is just to keep it cool for me. Just if if there's even a doubt, I'll be like, "What up, dog? What up, man?" I, like, because I'm Sam, excited to see everybody. I know. Always yeah. excited. What up, my dude? How you doing, man? I'll just say, "What up, dog?" And then another thing, like, is if you say, "What up, dog." You don't uh, run the risk of misgendering anyone. Oh, I don't play that game. Maybe, maybe miss, maybe miss species them, but, but you know, you know. I don't play that game. No, I actually don't either. Now, I why? Mean, Go ahead, I'm listening. It's a, well, it's a touchy subject, but for some, a, for yeah, for some, but I just, I'm all about freedom. Same. So, like, I don't care what you do with your life at all what, whatever you want do what do, you want do what you want but when you start impeding on my freedom and tell me i have to do something and tell me i have to do something i don't like being told what to do as it is I don't the either. only person tells me what to do is my wife yep half that, the time i don't listen to her and that's hard to do i know <laughs> <clears throat> but i don't that that's what that's what i get into like i don't care what you do at all like be be you do whatever you want to do a thousand times over i just don't tell me I don't have to make agree. me play along with it. And I agree with that. I, that's where I'm at. I think people should be able to live their life however they want to within reason. Uh, if you're, I think if if it if it's, I don't think we should push agendas on kids, regardless of that agenda, right? Uh, do I think we should push religion on kids though, right? People ain't gonna want to hear that, but yeah, I do think that's the best thing for kids. Uh, do I think uh, that goes back to freedom? Yeah. Do I think there's also <laughs> though like some cult ish things that happen to where people think oh it's religion it's okay no it's not 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 what you're doing that's different uh like for example when i when i first started uh getting into church you know like you were one of the first people to pray for me you know and and we don't get to come over there all the time anymore and it was nothing to do with the the church where do you go to church at i go to mercy temple mercy temple i'm yeah. again I'm you, come, you come over there a couple times yeah well we go up the road <clears> now to uh life chapel and i've accidentally called life chapel mercy temple a time or two but again it's, it's pretty close and it and i'm again i'm bad at names the only reason we didn't uh, come back was i finally had my breakthrough over here absolutely just, it just felt find it places. felt right and now i had a few breakthroughs over there i was crying bawling going through it it's just once it finally clicked for me and everything kind of felt right it worked i loved i love mercy temple still love mercy temple they, they're and we're gonna go visit some they're such a big part of just when I started finding God in Jesus, man, it just so happened this ended up working. It just, it was just one day and that was it. Oh, you got to find a place that's home for you. Yeah. Well, I bawled family. like a baby, man. I was, I, was <clears throat> I, 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 so I told Kenny Young, I said, I said, I wish God would pick me up by my neck and the scruff and my belt and shake me the, around and make me right. And Kenny laughed and he said, he'll do it. And then I said, I take that back. It'll be something crazy like cancer or something awful to really scare me straight. And Kenny said, it's too late. <laughs> Yeah. He said, "You done said it. He already knows what you want." And man, sure <clears> enough, <throat> God God scared me for a, six months to a year, shaking me around. Man, deservedly going through it. Like I was trying just so hard to find some comfort and peace and state of mind, and just trying to like deal with my own sins and really look at myself in the mirror. And I'm I'm still trying to get past mm-hmm. all that. And uh, but I found God through it, you know. And all the any any help scares, anything crazy that got to me. Uh, I had to like sit back and think like, well, you prayed for it. <laughs> you asked him for it. It's like, what are you talking about? How are you even going to be upset? If uh, if I was to find out, you know, tomorrow that I, that I had cancer, right? Horrible, terrible, terrible illness, right? Yes. But I also have <clears throat> to know in my head that I that I prayed for that over the alternative of me continu- continuing to live a life of sin and uh, not not fixing myself. It takes me being afraid often to do things. and And again, had I not prayed for it, I could just be like, well, 
no, I prayed for my things. I prayed for my scares. I, I prayed for my scares because I, I did want to be scared straight. I did want to be scared right. You know, I did want to be scared. Uh, I did want God to look me in the face and be like, hey, what are you, what the heck, what are you doing? You yeah. know, I got you. And he, he got on me heavy, man. Uh, I got He'll taken. He'll yeah, get on man, you. he will. And uh, <clears throat> I was going through it from the minute I came and seen you all over there. And what I was getting to is we was looking around at churches trying to trying to find God, man. And and there is God over there at y'all's church. There's good stuff over there. There's good stuff over here. Uh, plenty of good churches. There's a lot of great churches around here. But the problem was, <laughs> we went to a couple, and one guy was like telling us how to vote instead of pre. And I needed I needed hellfire and brimstone. I needed shook around. I needed to to. I needed to feel the the need and urge to hit my knees and 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 talk to God and pray for forgiveness and things like that. And uh, you telling me how to vote is like. What are we talking about? What do you mean? Yeah. I don't. I, what are we talking about? We're trying to get people to, to heaven. We know this world is horrible. We know this world is going to stay horrible. And sure, it's okay to touch on voting. But, dude, we're here to we're here to get souls to God. We're here to help them get forgiveness for their sins. Don't come and tell me how to vote. I know yeah. how to vote. Don't vote for the bad guy. <laughs> I get it. Vote for someone that cares about the country. Well, technically, in America, you're voting for the shiniest of two turds. Oof. Now, why is that? two-party system why why do we only have you know who hated the two-party system you know who wasn't pro two-party system george washington i hate the two-party system why didn't george washington want it and then tell me why you hate it i don't know why he didn't want he it. said I, that it was just a bad idea he said you're looking i for don't it. like the fact of just having these candidates on each side of the aisle run to see which the shot like i said the shiniest of two turds to yep. go against each other how can we get that different what do you think is a better option than two-party i don't know i'm I'm a big, I'm a libertarian. I'm not right or left. I'm a big anti-government. Some person. people kind of told me that's where I'm at. I, that, I do not like the government. I mean, I served in the military and, you know, I wouldn't trade my experiences for anything. I wouldn't say I wouldn't go back and do it again. It's a love-hate relationship. But I mean, you signed up because of 9-11, so obviously yeah, you love America. Yeah, I'm a I'm, I'm big uh, God, family, country person. Okay. You know, God first, family second, country, country third. I'm and with if you that. don't have people like that, then you don't have a country. I'm with it. I mean, I don't, I, somebody's got to stand up and I'm not saying the wars we fought. I mean, for example, I was in Iraq. I don't really think that we should have really been there. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid and I was in Iraq, I thought, oh, yeah, this is where we need to They be. did it. But looking jet, back, jet fuel does melt still beams. Yeah. Uh -huh. Looking back, I was just like, you know, I didn't really need to be there, but we were helping people. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, but at the same time, I don't feel like it's our place to help the rest of the world. I mean, we're not supposed to police the world. Exactly. We helping hands one thing, but it's like you know they say if they ever find money on Mars, our we'll government go. will send money to them. Well, we'll our, go. Uh, people on Mars, our yeah. government will send money to we'll, them. We'll go fight the aliens too. Yeah, you know, try to take their oil. We'll either go to war with them or send money to them. One, one or the other. It's never. It's never iffy. I yeah. said that to someone earlier. It was actually Roy Harrison. He's going to come on sometime. I think y'all would have a good conversation. Uh, I think we're going to have him. Uh, I say conversation because people are afraid of the word debate, but a debate, I'll tell you what a debate is. I like a good debate. Dude, I do too, but and here's the thing. You can't get anywhere without debate, and that's one of the things that I think is wrong with this country. You can't tell anybody anything. Everybody's no. setting their ways, and people, then when you say something somebody don't agree with, you just get canceled, or they're just like, oh, I hate you. I'm just going to no, go away. You're just not you're you not what talk I agree anything with. Out. People are afraid of the term debate because they think that automatically means a like a head to head thing. But a debate by definition, and I'm trying to set up debates on the pages. And we're gonna what I want to do is because dude, you're having no problem talking. I want to do another interview with you sometime so we can talk about your businesses and life and military stuff. That way you can get more views. Because we're gonna get a couple of views on the YouTube, but it's so much more on the Facebook. And I what is that? forgot to take this out. What is that? It just comes out of the bolt, just the little thing right here. And I was sitting there rubbing. I was like, oh, I didn't take that out. But you pull this out, and this, this comes out. Here's the star. Okay. <clears throat> kind of like what helps chamber the round. 100% want to get you on again so we can actually get you some views talking about business and stuff. Uh, not just talking about business, just talking in general, but this way you can advertise a little better. Because, uh, again, this is just – it's YouTube. It's so much different than Facebook. I don't uh, – Facebook is easy. You just yeah. put the news. Uh, but a debate, by definition, is a formal discussion on a particular topic in a public meeting or legislative assembly in which opposing arguments are put forward. That's just that's a conversation. You know, yeah. that's a that's a conversation about your beliefs and people. They can't. 
they can't uh, – that word debate is scary to people because they think it's someone trying to change your mind. But that's every conversation ever. Well, uh, you run into that. Like you can't – people can't take it. Uh, other people's consideration. They want it to be left. They want it to be one way or the other. Yeah. They, they want, want it to be left or right. Way. They want it to be Republican or Democrat. Uh, my grandma, I asked her, we were making fun of her because we were voting, I think it's in 20, whatever the last election was. Row, row. <laughs> we were voting for Trump for sure because we weren't going to vote for Hillary. Uh, that's just where we was at on it. Not because we vote Republican or Democrat. We just weren't going to vote for Hillary. Uh, and Trump was probably going to win and he did. And I don't even think I voted that year. Uh, but we asked my grandma. She was like, I ain't voting for no Republican. She was one of those. She only voted Democrat her whole life. Was poor all her life. Was a good lady. Let a lot of us live with her, man. But her money situation never, ever changed. She was always poor. And uh, my uncle would give her grief and be like, that's because you voting Democrat all your life. That's why you bored. And he was just aggravating her, you know, and he shouldn't have. But it was funny, you know, at the time. But I asked her one day, I said, I said, so if Satan was running on the on the – Democratic ticket and Jesus runs on the Republican ticket. Who are you voting for? She said, I ain't voting for no damn Republican. And I was like, Oh no. She said, But he wouldn't run Republican. Uh, I do think it should be none of them know what, what milk costs, none of them know what gas costs, none of them know what our, our our rent is, our house bills, our utility bills. They have no idea. They probably don't know what their utilities cost. They've got someone handling all that for them. I would like to see a normal guy get in, but I don't think we'll almost ever see that. Not with a two-party system. How do how do we what what would be a better system? I think I might have asked you that. I ain't sure if you, I don't remember. I don't. Name. I mean, I don't know. I just I think the whole thing needs to be completely and totally revamped. It just needs to be done away with. I don't like as far as like term limits. Uh, we I, need those. Yeah, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't. There's no way. I think I seen it. I seen it on an actual podcast. I don't remember which one it was, but some video on Facebook, but. There's, uh, if you're making $250,000 a year, do you know how many years it would take you to become, you know, to have $28 million in the bank? How many? I mean, I don't know exactly, but it was a something lot. like, you know, it, you couldn't do it in your life. Four, and then four times 28. Yeah, you couldn't do it in your yeah, life. Yeah, you life. couldn't do it. That's over 100 years. So how does these people that are in Congress making 250000 a year have $30, $30 million? We'd, we'd have to ask Pelosi. Yeah, exactly. She, knows. she was the one I think they were talking about. Who's that guy that froze? Oh, the turtle guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he forgot who he was. He forgot uh, everything. Who he was. Mitch McConnell. Yeah, I meant. <clears throat> I don't. I don't think. I have no. I have no quarrel. No qualms about people that have uh, dementia. It's an awful, horrible disease. But if you have dementia, probably shouldn't be right helping run the country. No, probably not I, the best fit. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I I believe. I feel like a. If you're going to be in charge of the military. And you should have been in the military at some point in your life. I like that. I, I agree think that, that that should be like one of the stipulations. I know it's not, but I think if you train people, you should have had at least one fight. If you're going to be fight in charge of the world's greatest fighting force, mm -hmm. you, should. you should probably know how the world's greatest fighting force works. So, uh, what do you? Who do you? Okay, so we're going to get Trump or Biden most likely. Who? If you had to vote, and I don't mean put in a weird way, and if you can't say, don't say it, because I know you kind of do work with the public with, with selling houses and stuff, no, and they, they can make things People don't weird. like me. They don't like me. There you go. Who who are you thinking about voting for? Oh, I, I, there's no way on God's green earth I'd vote for Biden. That's where I'm at. No way. That's where I'm at. Now, would you vote for Trump instead, or would you write someone else? If in? he's on the ticket. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it, whoever, if, if Hillary ran against Biden, I'd vote for Hillary. Oh, okay. I mean, that, I, they're, the country has been... What do you, oh, I guess I probably wouldn't vote at all. But yeah, so that's um, a, that's an option. But at the end yeah. of the day, like with the electoral college, our votes don't really count anyway. Ours is a suggestion, right? Well, I mean, so to me, that's a slippery slope. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like you should. I mean, I, I get that. I get the. Yeah. I've, I've we should it, vote. I've said it a million times. You know, I feel like nothing I do matters. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if that gets out and nobody goes and votes. They're just going to for then, sure pick her. <laughs> they're going to pick who they want anyway. I mean, they, I think they're doing that. It kind of seems like it. Kind of seems like it. What do you think about Ramaswamy? Or have you watched any? Uh, I think uh, the is that the Indian guy, the Vivek. Yeah, Vi yeah. Vivek. I think. I think he's a uh, Obama in red clothing. Is he? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if you go back and look at watch the videos of he did he uh, did say an Obama quote. He says I'm a weird guy time. with a weird name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I mean, I guess that. as far as like. I, I really just, I mean, at everybody that could possibly run, Trump would be the only one that I would, I mean, like I said, I'd vote for anybody that runs against Biden. What about but, Kennedy? 
Uh, he's got some good ideas. Well, about Ken- now, I, but now I, to me, I, I, now, but I don't watch it like stuff. that. I think Kennedy and Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy are saying similar things. I do think they are saying similar things. Yeah. But like you said, if he's an Obama, and I'm not saying I don't, I wasn't old enough to really understand if Obama was a good or a bad president. Right. Yeah. I understand what he means. I was to, in the military under him. Okay. And Bush. Oh, okay. And they were both crappy. Oh, so both awful. Yeah, I didn't like either one of them. So why? What What do you mean? What What made it bad? Well, I mean, I just, uh, just uh, they're bought and paid for, man. I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. Just about every politician you ever. That's one thing I liked about Trump, as far as politics goes, is I did. He did not have to worry about anybody's money. Yeah, he at least had daddies yeah, in his. He, I mean, he, he, you know, he might not be, you know, he, he's turned his dad's yeah. million dollar loan into yeah. a, a, an empire. He may not be as self made as he lets on. Yeah, because let's be realistic for one second together. If I had a million dollars, I'd be, I'd be rich. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can hit a come up too, brother. Oh yeah. If you give me a, if you give me the if bag. I, if I started off with a million dollars, I'd probably, if I, by the time I'm seventy, I'd probably be a billionaire. Yeah, if you give or me, at least close. give me the bag. I'll turn it up. I'll have at least a couple hundred mil. Yeah, you know what it's called. You know what it's called in the drug deal, drug trade at that point, right? He what? got a front. Oh yeah. He got it on front, and then he, he, you know, he had to come up on it. And I don't, I don't touch drug. Look, so for like the first time in my life, dude. Maybe not first time in my life. I'm I'm clean as a whistle. I'll sip on some. Uh, if I decide to have me a drink, I'll sip on some tequila. I'll sip on some tequila on ice with a lime. I don't shoot. I ain't a shooter. I'm 30 years old. I'll pour a, a glass of a Alto's tequila over ice. I'll have me a lime on the side. And I'll have me some salt on the side. And I'll uh I'll give me some salt lime or salt. Take me a sip. Hit that lime. And I can go like that all night. I can put a bottle away. Small bottle. If I do a big bottle, entirely too much, right? Teeny tiny bottle, I can sip on that while everyone, they can all drink beer or, and I say they all, my wife don't drink. She sips on a beer every now and then I get her to try. Uh, but anybody can drink their beer, drink their whiskey, do whatever they want to do. As long as I've got that, I ain't going to get too drunk. I ain't going to go drive anyway because I'm not an idiot. Uh, I can just sit there and get a buzz on over like four or five, six hours while we watch fights and stuff. And then uh, the other night I did try, I did have some uh, pineapple uh, cider. Hey, now that was good. The pine- yeah. Pineapple cider was good. I like anything. I mean, I don't like pineapple on pizza, but I like anything, like any pineapple flavor. Twelve grams Especially of drinks. sugar. None of it's added. It's a, it's a good, clean little drink. I like that. I like, I like pineapple flavor. Yeah, I try to. St- I stay away from everything. I try to. I stay away from alcohol. I, I had a better good, for you. Well, I mean, it's not. I'm not down on anybody that drinks. I just, it's personal for me, and it's when I come home from Iraq, I kind of started self-medicating i get that and it turned into a lot more i have an addictive personality i get that i get addicted really easy that's why i don't i don't i'll never try no hard drugs or anything like that i get that i get I, that i'd be that guy that would be in and out of jail all the time on the same charge because i know i wouldn't i have an addictive person i get addicted very easy i tried a <laughs> uh i tried a uh i tried a hard hard drug one time i mean maybe, maybe 10 maybe how old am i 30 probably 10 years ago probably probably nine years ago because i was 21 i was old enough to get in the bar and uh, i went to bed late and woke up early Corey got a private lesson this morning Corey perigo buddy of mine uh he, he's very lackadaisical very laid back and uh so you'll be like and he's wanting to fight again eventually and uh his problem is he's very lackadaisical now there's a difference like if i got a private with somebody and they have no intentions of fighting okay i can work them out i can i can get them to smoke and breathe heavy and, and learn technique and look sharp but if you're wanting to fight people i have to make you look different it has to be different it has to be different yeah. pop it has to be it has to be a different level of what we're doing we have to get fired up together you know you have to be pushed to the point of fighting people so the first day i pushed him a little but again he's so lackadaisical that he doesn't he don't put no pop on the pads you know he don't do this he don't he don't wow and like if, if someone's really cracking pads and really throwing their combos they should be wow, 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 wow. Like they should, they should get up and get on it, you know. Yeah. And so the first day we did, which was two weeks ago, he didn't do any of that. I still worked him pretty good, got him worked out. And today I decided I was going to do different. So I cut off his minute break. I cut it down to forty seconds. I gave him three three minute rounds at the end. We did like forty minutes of technique, forty five minutes. Did. Oh yeah, <laughs> I gave him like forty five minutes of technique, and then uh, maybe fifty minutes of technique, just trying to make some stuff better and more right for him. And all that time was spent, it, was, it wasn't even long combos. It was mostly short combos and making his seven harder and, and making his kicks harder. 
And then once we got to the pad rounds, I was like, what do you want about the same as last time? And again, we're easing back in. We haven't been training full time and stuff. Uh, so I'm easing him in the same way I'm going to need to ease back in because you can't just step into the dog. You can't just step in and be that man if you haven't been being that man. It's it's weird. They're different people. And I don't mean that in a weird way. I mean that is a totally different person than me right now. That's a different guy. I kn- we're here. I remember that guy. He's a different dude, man. Nice. But, like, when it's time to go, we're going to go a little bit. And, like, so – when we got to the rounds, I really, really started getting some – I got some dog out of him today. Mm-hmm. He woke up. He was cracking everything today. And if, if we get more of that out of him moving forward, if he can get to the point where he's doing that when we're training, oh, dude, dude's going to be a little nasty, man. And what I told him is I was like, if you're throwing it like you mean it, if you're throwing everything with intention, you're going to look bigger. You're going to look meaner and nastier. And he's got this little uh, – he's he's running like a mullet, mullet mohawk almost, right? But, like, when he's really throwing the combos and really meaning it and really dogging up – He's looking a little bit like Vitor in a scary way. And I'm like, you got to keep moving like that because that other crap ain't cutting it. That dog dog crap mess that you're doing where you're sandbagging me. I said, because I've seen you. I know what you can do, and you're sandbagging me by a mile. I said, when you're sandbagging, you look like crap, like real crap. I said, when you're doing that that, that mean, that dog up, dude, you're looking scary. And uh, I said, but I said, so when we spar and I'm sparring with you and I feel like my, like I'm miles taller than you, I said, that's because I'm projecting that. I'm, I'm sparring you with a, with a intention. I said, when you're out here just touching me, dude, I ain't afraid of that. I'm going to eat you alive. And, uh, I, I think, I think he's right. He's, he's about your age. I think he's right on the, uh, I think he's right at the turn of something, uh, maybe putting him a little run together. He's never had a good run, but I think, uh, if he gets a little time with Chuck Mitchell, that's 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu black belt. That's who I got my blue belt under. That's the only belt I have. I think once, uh, if he gets that time, I think we might get to see Corey put a little run together. Maybe even get him a belt. Maybe even get him a belt. It would be very cool to see. It would make me proud. Now, did, did he fight at AFC? Yeah, yeah. He fought. I, I think I remember Yeah, he beat Bud Cook that night. Remember, they beat the mess out of each other for a second. Yeah. And then it was over. He beat him. I got to come to a couple of them. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I did the uh, – I was working on the ambulance. Okay, I remember that. Hey, that, was, that was the best night of money you ever got, right? Oh, yeah, that was fun. Okay. And then I came to one. We just came to one. Yeah, that's cool, and um, we appreciate that a lot. And we are, y'all were awesome as ambulances. Yeah, they did a – yeah, I was working for DAS at the time. Okay. And, I mean, like, that was the easiest money I made. It was nice. I just got to sit there and do yep. nothing and watch fights. Yeah, I love that. Do you miss DAS or no? No. Okay, I dig it. No, I don't miss uh, – the medical field is a hard field – to work it's a lot of it's a lot of stress and yeah and not a lot of thanks oh well i don't really care about that i mean you, you don't get it i guess you probably do a lot of people out there that that uh you know thank them and stuff but i, I could care less about stuff like that i just dealing with the hospitals and the politics during covid and all that stupid stuff i just man, i'd had enough and then I, you get to the point to where you uh and that was one of the reasons like i was still working for the ambulance service in marshall county I got um, you. I'm listening. Well, I well, I was on while well, after I got my real estate license, but you could just get to the point to where, and I don't mean this ugly, but you know, an ambulance is there for a reason. Yes, it's an emergency, not because Mama sprained her ankle at Walmart three days ago and she waits till three o'clock in the morning to call you and she's been sitting at home for three days. <laughs> I get that. And when you work for a private service, then it's all about the money. It's all about hey, you got to take them no matter what because they need. <clears throat> the money to run a business it's a business yeah so when you work for a hospital it's a little different you know you can get a little little more leeway as to hey i'm not taking you to the hospital because of this you know you twisted your ankle use your other ankle and drive to the hospital yeah yeah yeah. um but when you start dealing with that so much especially in small towns because that's mainly what you deal with yeah you know you work a an actual emergency like which God, thank god i don't want i wouldn't want to be working emergency no all the time. never and that means somebody's hurt yes possibly dying but um, taking mom out of the hospital because she sprained her ankle, man, just, just don't cut yeah, it. Yeah, I, just, I get that. Just why I mean, don't you, you put her the, in the vehicle and take her? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, seven vehicles sitting in the yard. Yeah, you know? well, what's going on here? It's like, what well, does one of these vehicles not work? Put her on your motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just you get to the point to where you get so burnt out on the stupid stuff that you almost start to not actually care about the things that actually need to be cared about, like heart attacks and yeah you know uh, uh vehicle accidents stuff like that and not not care yeah. like become desensitized yeah yeah like, is it an is it is she having a heart attack or is yeah. she gassing every almost every time the times go off you get to the point where you're just like 
Is it? Uh, are they really having a heart attack? Should I or, hurry? Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to hurry, but yeah, should I though as much? But, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but that, it, it does go through your head, and it gets to the point to where it's just like, I mean, those those people are a different breed. These guys, these men and women that are in this for years and years at a time, they are a different breed of people. They are they have my utmost respect, and and that's where I'm at. Uh, I could I did it for four, three or four years, and I was burnt out. Like I couldn't take it no more. It's like I cannot do this any longer. And that's how you get people this doing it for 20 years and they just does an insane amount of respect i respect them didn't you work did you work with madison's dad uh madison i can't remember his last name i'm not good with names like yeah that. oh he's kind of he's kind of squinty uh blonde haired guy <clears throat> mm. squinty like this. i don't know <laughs> ask me if i can see still <laughs> can you straight up dog yeah he looks like you're completely close <laughs> no 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 i can still see here he is. my kids are like can you see dad i'm like shoot yeah man yeah, years hey, years of years of practice. Like is a years of practice, man. Yeah, I've always had little squinty, beady eyes. And I don't mean to. I just do. But uh, no. But I feel the same way about people in the uh the factory setting. I don't. Oh, I could. I can't. I've tried it. I respect I the mess. I don't know how they just do it. Now, if I just had to to pay the bills, hundred million percent. Now I work at I work at factories. Some not the same. Not the same repetition. The same exact thing every day. Uh, it's a little different because I, I'm kind of in. Wish my wife would let. Me, wish my wife would have petted me when I was sleeping last night. <laughs> but uh, I just feel like uh, it's hard. It's always been hard for me to stick around places. I'm a, I'm a. I'm the same way. I'll fly on you. I gotta go. Why? I'm bird. <laughs> I gotta hit the road. And uh, the people that do that for 50, yeah. 30, 40 years. What is that? It's just a. Uh... I call them a snake. You just put it through the barrel to clean out the carbon that's built up inside the barrel. Sweet. That was a little thick to pull through. Okay. And then uh, I uh, I respect the mess out of those people that do that for 30, 40, 50 years. I couldn't. I, I, I don't I, want I, to. I've got lots of family members that did. I, yep. I've worked in a couple of different factories. I don't ever it's not, make it very long. I don't enjoy it. I, it's I, usually I long enough to pay my bills and same. Then, until I find another job. Same. So what what other kind of jobs are there around here that's not a factory? What would you advise people to do around here? It's hard right around here. I don't know. I mean, we got a lot of factories. You got to have factory workers. You got to have. I them. mean, so but with the cost of living, do you think? Do, do you think? Do you think the uh, the minimum wage should go up? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think you should have minimum wage. What do you mean? I don't think there should be any minimum wage. What does that mean? Like, if I can, if I want to pay you twenty five cents an hour, and you agree to that, and that's what you're going to get paid. I think I, I'm not like a lot of people. Uh, um, most it, people are probably going to crucify me for saying this, but no, uh, I don't. The minimum wage is a joke to me. Like, if you have a minimum wage that you can pay somebody, someone's going to pay the minimum. The minimum. It completely and it completely and totally does away with okay. competition. So, For example, if you got all right, Burger King and McDonald's, oh, no, same restaurant. I know we're at, we're in the same boat. Go ahead so, and say it. Burger King, McDonald's. Burger King says I'm going to pay you five an hour, <clears throat> no minimum wage, and McDonald's says I'm going to pay you six an hour. Where's everybody going to work? McDonald's. Okay, so what's Burger King going to have to do? They have to pay more, and so they go to seven, mm -hmm. and then it's going to get, it's going to increase wages across the board until it gets to a point to where they can't pay anymore. Yeah, but it does away with minimum wage. 100%. So instead of making seven twenty five or whatever it is now an hour. You might be making nine dollars at Burger King and you know nine twenty five at McDonald's, but that's as much as they can pay. It, it's good for them, you know, that they can still make money and profit. <clears throat> that's what I. That's the way I don't think there should be a minimum wage at all. Okay, I can see a reason for doing away with the minimum wage. I can see that. Um, and a lot of people, that's their argument. Well, how are how are the, how are they gonna how are they gonna be able to keep up and pay? Well, if you can't pay people a livable wage, in my opinion, in my opinion, I don't think you should be a business. That's, yeah. Yeah. I think if you can't pay people a livable wage, I don't think you should have the ability or right to be a business unless you want to run it yourself. If you can just do it yourself, by all means do it. But if you can't afford to pay your employees to just be alive, I'm not with it. Yeah. they can't. It. It's all about greed. Yeah. You well, cannot tell me that these companies that but, are out here, especially like in say Fort Payne area, uh, Wal they can't oh. pay. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. I'll say that one. I, you, there's no way you can. Which I mean, I think some Walmart employees get paid pretty good money. McDonald's. Um. Now, do you deserve you, a lot of money to flip burgers? No, no, no. 
Yeah, it's a minimum. It's a minimum top job. Scale. But McDonald's is look at those profits. Yeah, I think, exactly. I, I think look at your profits. What we it's talked just, about. It's, it's not that they can't pay you a, a decent livable wage. It's they that, don't that, want they, to. It's going to come out of their pocket. Yep, they don't want to. So, McDonald's profits are insane. Walmart's profits are insane. They're paying most of their people almost. Uh, you know, barely enough to live, especially with the economy right now. And they're posting almost record profits, almost just like insane amounts of profit. So if Walmart decided to start paying $25 an hour, right? They're like, well, the cost of all the stuff's going to go up. Why? So they, don't, so they don't lose $1 million in profit a year out of their $50 billion profit margin that they hit? What are we really talking about? Yeah. What do we mean? Well, uh, McDonald's can't afford to pay a livable wage. Well, that's a low skill job. Okay, agreed. But what was their profit margin like? How much money did they make last year? A hundred million, so they can't go to eighty million that they made yeah. just to pay everybody. I okay, I, I think I seen a story about a a CEO that done that. He ended up doing away with all his bonuses. It was like in New York or something, and doing away. He cut his pay down to like seventy five thousand for the year, and he gave everybody in his company like seventy same pay wage he was making, or maybe just a little less. Yeah, or yeah. Like How'd it go? Uh, I mean, I'm, I imagine the people probably stayed around. A yeah, little yeah. Bit. I bet they didn't want to leave. Yeah. But it's, it's just all about greed to me. I don't, you, that's where I'm at. if you have, I understand like mom and pop shops nope. might not can pay you, but yep. you know, seven twenty five an hour. Yes. I get that. But if you're making a billion dollars a year. Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah. And I got to pay $3 for a cheeseburger now. Exactly. And you saying it's going to go more high. You ain't paying nothing. No way. I mean, I have a small, tiny mom and pop company and I pay my son. He's 17, still in school. And I pay him 15 to 20 an hour mm -hmm. for a job. Mm -hmm. And yes, that cuts out of my profit. Yeah. So instead of making five hundred dollars for this job I just did, I might make three hundred because I have to pay him the yeah. hours he helped me. But it come out of my profit, and I want him to, um, I want him to be excited about working. Yes. I want him to actually make some money. I mean, it's actually helping me out too because now I ain't got to pay for his gas and everything. Else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, you know, it evens out. <laughs> so. But yeah, I mean, dude, imagine when he when he finally goes and gets his first job that's not with you. He's gonna be like, hang on. This sucks. Yeah, go, this from, sucks. go from like 15 to 20 now. According to, I mean, usually I, it's roughly around 15, but if I'm making a little more money, I yeah. can I oh, that's, that's good stuff. But um, go from that to making 725 at McDonald's, you know, oh, which he's yeah. like me. He, he I don't do think that he can, he's going to ever, he's going to be an entrepreneur. I love that. I don't think that he's ever going to, um, I mean, he'll, he, he'll work to provide for his family, I'm sure, if he has to, like I have to over the years. I mean, I'm 36 and, yeah. I'm just now getting to the point to where I got a little more freedom to try and venture out and do my own things. Yeah. You know, but it's been years of working at factories and the ambulance service and the sheriff's department and places like that to be able to get there. My job, I can't really talk about my job on the internet because like work, it's a podcast, it's things like that. I am blessed, blessed to have the job I have. Uh, I go to work, I do my job, I get all of my stuff done and uh, I work the days and then, they they let me uh it sounds bad doc they let me but like it, it's afforded me time to be able to do the things on the outside that i think are going to turn into some cool things um when we started the grapevine the goal was always to turn it into a real newspaper i 100 percent uh, see that happening does that mean a physical piece of paper no not at all uh who all do you know right now that gets a newspaper a physical newspaper not that, too many yeah my About the only time I ever try and get one is if I know somebody that's in it. Yeah, and you keep it. Yeah. Uh, my grandparents, <laughs> you know, I know my grandparents get the newspaper. I know their, I know other people's grandparents get the newspaper, but almost everything's online now. The only thing we've got to do with the grapevine is we've got to find some people to back the project. Now, that is going to be hard here because we do say some, we don't say anti police things, but we just say the truth. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a that's a risky thing to say nowadays. Yeah, if yeah. you're not catering to everybody's yes. beliefs and needs, then you get crucified. But people act like I'm saying I hate the police. I do not hate the police. I am very anti bad police. I am so incredibly pro good police that I think the good police deserve a raise. Fire the bad ones. Give the good ones a raise. Cut the cut the bad. Cut and be the, held accountable when you do something wrong. Cut the grain. Yes, and that too, and that's a problem. They don't like hearing that. Hey, look, if I'm gonna get fired. If I work for you at Joe Smo's mm -hmm. uh, barbecue yeah. pit yep. and I do something illegal yep. or I do something that goes against your codes or ethics or whatever your, your values are, or whatever you've got in place at that restaurant, what's going to happen to me? You may give me a warning the first time. If I do it again the second time, what's going to happen? You're fired. Exactly. See ya. That's so, it. I mean, 
yeah. I don't think these people not like I said, I'm just like you. Yep. I'm big, I'm pro pro police, pro uh first responders in mm-hmm. general. Um the good ones. They have my utmost respect. Always. They, they have a crazy hard job. And I, I mean, I've done it. I've, I, but I'm not like actual APO certified, but I've worked for the sheriff's office. I've ridden reserve and stuff back in the day, a long time ago. I was an MP in the military. I dig it. Um, so, but I don't, I do not, you, 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 you can't get away from stuff. I mean, you're, you're, I don't think you, your punishment for doing something serious. Yes is to be fired to go work at another police station. No, that's crazy. It's and, crazy. And it's absurd it, to me. And again, and we're not <clears> saying <throat> police people's, their personal life. I, I have no zero issue with what you do in your personal life as, as, a, as a, a law enforcement officer. Now, if you're a law enforcement officer and you're stepping out on your wife, is it wrong? 100 million percent. Is it my business? No. No, yeah. not at all. Is it really even your job's business? Your no. employer's business? No, it's none. Not. Now, if you're if you're uh, hounding people and writing three hundred tickets a month no, just to do it, about. that's not cool, man. <laughs> that's not it. You know, if you're a uh, if you're arresting people for drugs and you're doing drugs on the side, I'm not saying that's my business because that's your private life. But it looks weird. <laughs> it's definitely a weird look. You know that that you're getting all this. Uh, well, I, just like as an MP, you got to be held to a higher standard. Yeah, I, and I, mean, I and I think it should be. Do you think? That, that, I think that should be people's business. I, I wouldn't. You can't turn around and arrest me for having weed on in my vehicle, which I don't. But yeah. I'm just saying, you can't arrest me for having weed in a vehicle and then turn around and go smoke it. Okay, well then I agree there. I mean, you can't do that. It's a, it's a slipper. Personally, I don't think weed should be illegal. Yeah. I don't smoke weed. There's nothing in my house. I don't never have no drugs in my house. I don't. I don't dabble in nothing. Well, we, it's crazy to me. me. I'm the same way. It's crazy to me that that liquor is legal and well, weed is not. Yeah, well, that too. I mean, you can do a lot more damage behind a wheel of a vehicle with alcohol in your system than you can weed. Hundred percent. I mean, what's the? You're probably just going to drive 20 miles an hour and be really cautious. You got any change but, back there for a cheeseburger? I mean, I don't think nobody should be behind the wheel of a vehicle impaired. In any no, sort. no. Be sober. Go but drive. it's just crazy to me that you know it's illegal to. Like say, for example, I, I think the VA is actually starting to talk about for PTSD, marijuana, and, uh, marijuana. They're doing. I don't know if they're already doing the um, clinical trials or whatever you call them. What's the clinical trial? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I think, I think they are. They are talking about it. Um, but it's just crazy to me that it's illegal to have something that could calm you down. Like, for example, let's just use military personnel. Somebody that's been to war and has struggles with PTSD. 100%. It's crazy that there is an herb yeah. that grows in the ground that God provided out there that yes. you can take and be like, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of calm now. I'm calm yeah. down. I'm going to eat this or take that's it in not, form. That's not legal, but it's completely and totally legal for my doctor to put 75 different kinds of pills in my body. Here, take this... Uh, uh, Zoloft or all these other prescription uh, mental medications. Yeah. We well, uh, need the Zannies. You need the Zannies. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you're going to tell me that something made in a factory processed with all this stuff in it and all these chemicals and additives, incredibly addictive. Yeah, incredibly addictive is legal yeah. as long as I got a prescription for yes. it. Yes, but I can't get a prescription for an actual natural herb that grows in the ground it's a money racket it's absurd yeah. it's a money racket they're making a lot it's of the money. same way with like prohibition maybe i don't know I don't in, know. I don't know in my now, so. in my opinion the 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 uh the doctors that are peddling the uh, addictive substances now if you're a doctor trying to help people by goodness help those people you're a good person but in my opinion if you're a doctor that's peddling people drugs giving them uh uh how do you say it? giving them refills very clearly before they need it uh giving them um pain medicine, uh, uh, anxiety medicine that they very clearly don't need and that is addictive, I think you are legally getting people addicted to stuff on purpose to make money. Oh, yeah. And, well, and I mean, that's a drug dealer. Does a doctor does a doctor make money if you're sitting at home? Not a bit. Perfectly happy. Not a bit, man. Not you a lead. That's why I try and stay. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have like regular insurance. I have the VA. Okay. But they're a joke in itself. I've heard that. But I just try and stay away from them. If, if I'm not dying, I just try not to go to the doctor. I get that. I also <laughs> try to stay away from the doctor because I don't have insurance because I don't make enough money to have insurance. And yeah. it's a... Uh, it's wild. It's With, hard when you're only making a few bucks an hour and then they're going to take two, $300 out of your check every week. Yeah, dude. And you're two, only making 500 $200 for, for insurance is kind of insane. But now we found out that my wife has insurance. 
Yeah. And and that's it, another thing I don't like. Just kind of like back to the politics yeah, and stuff. It's like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a better system out there that you could do with insurance that wouldn't be like if everybody just went and paid a normal rate. You yeah. know, insurance is caused if, if you use the remote in your hospital, they charge you for the batteries, like two hundred dollars for a set of double A batteries. That's that's wild. Next time you go to the hospital, ask them for a detailed breakdown of your charges. Yeah. And so just it's going to be the batteries. Do it and put, post it on, on the podcast. Oh, I don't go to the I don't go no more. Well, I'm just saying no more kids. I'm Next not time going. you got a family member that goes to the hospital. She has a hospital, you know, a hospital visit. Next time they have an hospital visit, ask for a detailed printout of your charges. I got you. And post it on here. I'll do that. It'll be. I'll put it on great you, you, I mean, it's like $200 for an ibuprofen. That's crazy. Um, and that's because the insurance would pay for it. So th- they can charge Blue Cross Blue Shield 200 which I don't, I don't know how the insurance exactly works. I know they don't pay the full amount. They pay like a portion of it. But, I, hey, well, I got a p- person that's going to pay it because they're paying for that. So I'm just going to charge 200 well, for an ibuprofen. When well, you could go get a ibuprofen from a whole bottle of ibuprofen for five bucks. Well, I'm going to ask you a weird question then, because what do you think about universal health care then? Since you're saying there's a better system, I'm asking. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm asking. I, I don't think that's it. Okay. What? I, that goes back to when you start making everybody have health care. It's the same thing. Like, I, But now isn't universal health care? We're all we're all like we're all paying some taxes and it goes to that or am i wrong how does that work in the other well, country? i'm not exactly i'm not exactly sure on that i know like there's countries like sweden and some of these uh european countries that do that like i, I want to say sweden is completely and totally free well, how does theirs um i think it's just like a tax thing uh, like you said you, you each each citizen has to pay so much taxes a year and then health is free what if we could vote on it and then everyone has health care for free? Because right now our taxes are going to – what do you think about – because right now our taxes are going to Ukraine. They're going to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Apparently, it, it's paying for trips to Ep- Epstein's Island. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. If we, if paying we could, for everything but the stuff it needs to pay for. Yeah, if we could if we could find a way to, to vote on our taxes going to universal health care for the country, would you be against that or no? Well, if – as We'd opposed, have to have a complete and total revamp of our government before uh, that. Yeah. Like it goes back to. They fought that. They fought all that so hard. No. If people want universal health care. Yeah. Tell them to go sign, sign up for the military and go go experience the VA a, a year after you get out. Oh, so the they, VA isn't working. Tell here. me they want universal health care. Do you get that. the VA forever? Yeah. Oh, and it's just awful. And that's all I've ever heard. I mean, it's, it's awful. It's not. I don't want to sit and down them completely. They're, they're, it's, it's a great thing to have, especially if you don't have insurance. You know, I can just go to the VA clinic or. A, I can go to the emergency room in Fort Payne okay. um, and they'll cover it if it's an actual emergency. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I had to twist my ankle. Yeah. <laughs> not if I twist my ankle, they may not cover that. Don't bring but your grandma on either. It's a great thing to have, but I still, I mean, do away with it and give veterans a card to just go where they want. I like that. I, I think it would save a lot more money. you got all these hospitals in each state and these clinics that if you just closed and said, hey, here's you a card. You know, you go show that to Fort Payne uh, or what is it called? Uh, the Cab Regional yeah. or Highlands or uh, Huntsville Hospital. And they just take it as an insurance. I think card. Huntsville owns Fort Payne now. I think I seen where they were buying it out. I think I heard that. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people have a lot of complaints about Fort Payne Hospital. Well, they bought out Highlands, but I, now, wouldn't go if, I wouldn't go there if I was on fire and I was at Fort Payne. It's Fort no, Payne, DeKalb. Or? DeKalb's Fort Payne, yeah. I'm talking about Highlands. That's Scottsboro. Oh, uh, okay. If that was the only place on the country with water and I was on fire, I'd just burn to death. So you think Scottsboro is worse than Fort <laughs> Payne? bad. Why do they have such bad reps? Well, it used to be. I mean, I haven't been there in years. But no, Fort Payne has a pretty bad Fort Payne has a pretty bad reputation. We have a... Uh, I've never have, really had a bad experience. I mean, neither. Payne. We had four kids. We had no trouble. Now, they did the surgery. They, uh, oh, man, I'll never forget it. I hurt my Achilles when I was young. I was so drunk. But I can still sometimes feel the doctor cutting cutting my foot oh god mm. horrible horrible pain they never should have touched me they should have waited for the surgeon you know and uh oh god i don't miss that a bit uh i don't feel it it's more like in passing i remember the doctor cutting my foot and it's just like oh, oh nasty feeling but uh that's the worst injury i ever had was my achilles that was a horrible horrible pain horrible hurt i bet i don't ever want I've it. heard it was pretty bad it's hard to mentally even still get past it uh Still, and I'm it's 14 years later, and it's still like in my head, like when I'm sparring and training. I even asked Trevor one day, I was like, I'm worried I'm gonna pop my, my Achilles again and have to have surgery. And I don't want that at all. He said, Sam, well, you've kicked the crap out of us, we're kicking the crap out of you. What are you talking about? Nothing's happened, nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, but what if it does? <laughs> there's always, you know, I've had a lot of sports injuries, and there's always oh, that oh, once you break something or oh. tear something. 
it's always in the back of your mind. I don't feel like you ever get back to 100%. I don't think so. Because you're always like, oh. Mentally, you know, you're babying it some. I'm starting to learn that now that I'm older. I, I was at my son's varsity practice, and I was trying to show him how to take a charge the correct way. And I had one of the, the bigger kids. He's pretty rough. He's a real good player. Um, John, I had him. I said, just come at me full speed and hit me. And at, at first, I didn't feel it. You know, I just went backwards and. I was like, that's where you got to plant your feet. You got to, you know, you got to stay still. You can't, you can't be leaning. You can't be falling back. I was trying to explain it to him. About halfway through the practice, I was like, mm, I'm hurting. Uh, yeah, I broke my rib up here. No. It's, it's still killing me. Every time oh, I cough God. or sneeze. So now are you teaching them basketball or are you coaching them? I, I help coach. That's uh, cool, man. That's cool. How much? Now, Cornerstone's in Rainsville. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an amazing school. I've heard some amazing that it's expensive. School. Is it super expensive? Or? It's no, it's it's not as, nowhere near as expensive as other private schools. Okay. I mean, it's so, expensive as far as like. You put all six of them there? No. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, ain't, I ain't got nowhere near that kind of money. <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> the oldest two go there. and um, How do you pick and choose who goes there? Well, the younger ones, uh, for us, we homeschool. Okay. Uh, my kids will never go back to public school. Why would they? Yeah. Ours either. Um. But we homeschool, and um, so once they get to a certain age, it gets a little harder. Yeah. I mean, well, now it's not as bad now because you got you they can just do an online course, so you mm-hmm. don't even really have to be involved. Other than ours, do ABC Mouse, and then a whole lot of other yeah. stuff. And so we have a kindergartner, uh, a six year old that's in kindergarten. I mean, who can't who can't teach colors and shapes? And <laughs> yeah, red. ABCs, yeah. Um, and then our our uh, Jace, he's about to be eleven in January, and he is homeschool. He's in fifth grade. Yeah. And but he does it online. A uh, Christian, uh, I can't remember the name of it. My wife's gonna kill me because I she said, told me a thousand times. But it's, a, it's like 30 to 35, 40 bucks a month. Okay. And ABC Mouse is 60 a year. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I dig it. And we can have like four users. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, it's 30, 40 bucks a month. And it's got all the, you pick the lessons you want to do. So he does like a math, science, history. And then we make him read 10 chapters of the Bible every day. Yeah. And we, we, he has a Bible. We don't make them read 10 chapters. Yeah, I was fixing to say that's, that's a, a that's lot. Yeah. That's a bunch. That'd I mean, be... That's more than I would read. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a reader. They'd be done in reading. like three months. Like, oh, we're done, Daddy. No. I've always said if it's if it's a good enough book, they'll make a movie. Oof. I, I'm not a, my wife now, she is the woman that you want. That, like She wants that this bigger than your house library. Yeah. And I she, think she Vicky does too, but like constantly. we have zero dollars, so I can't build her a big yeah. library. Do you play video games? Yes, from okay. time to time. You ever played God of War? Uh, it's been a long time. Okay. I have I have a good outcome for that and, and a, a good idea for a video game. And I, th- I would like to see a David and Goliath movie. I think that's important. I think we should see a cool David and Goliath movie. Right, and you can go past David and Goliath. Go David and Goliath and show uh, – show, uh, who was the girl? He had an affair with his friend's wife, right? Oh, uh, you talking about David? Yeah. Uh, Bathsheba? Yeah, show show the Bathsheba, show David's entire story beginning to end. You make a good movie out of it. I think it'd be good for people to see. Because a lot of times people think it's it's David versus the uh, the the small guy off the road. And it that's not it. It's David versus Goliath, right? You're mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna have these battles. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be on TV and all this, you're gonna have you're gonna have to fight Goliath. You have to be that guy. And uh so I think it'd be a cool movie to see David versus Goliath, right? So uh, on the God of War thing, I love the God of War games. I don't think the two newer ones are any good as far as – remember the first three where you got to kill uh, Odin and Ares? I played and, the first one when I yeah. was younger. Okay, so uh, I played all three, the second one. and they were a build-up. The first one was good, second one was better, third one was best. You got, And then the third one, you got to kill Hades, you got to kill Zeus, you got to kill a lot of gods, right? Now it seems like you're going to think for a second, Sam, so you should kill Jesus. No, but uh, I have a good idea. So uh, for Kratos, right now he just went through Norse mythology. He fought, he killed Odin. He fought Thor. Uh, he fought a few a few of those people. Again, I don't think those games were as good. But for the next game, or the next game, or the next game. Now, do you know what the end game was supposed to be for that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the end game setup was supposed to be uh, Kratos and the Egyptian god of war and the Norse god of war were all supposed to link up, and they were supposed to be the three wise men. And they were supposed to go meet Jesus, and they were supposed to take him gifts. They're going to be like, "Hey, we did it this way, and we know that you're a, a better way to do it." And that was going to be that would have been so epic for me to have seen that. It would have been great for kids to have seen that. Hey, we we did it this way. We think we think you're going to be better by doing it your way. And they give him their gifts, right? So, what I think would be cool, uh, since they're not doing that, what I think would be a cool way to do a new God of War game is you take Kratos, and he's got a son in the games now. 
you have the son get killed. And that stinks. That stinks. That's awful, right? It's a horrible way to do it. But he does, right? Because the kid's a, the character doesn't matter. He's, he's, he doesn't matter, right? But to Kratos, it's his son. So the son gets killed. Kratos finds that anger again, that, right? Well, turns out Kratos has found his way to a time where Jesus is a thing. Jesus and God are things. Angels are things. David has passed away. Uh, uh, all these people, all these strong guys uh, have passed away. You know, Michael's, you know, the archangel, all this stuff's already happened. So Kratos gets angry and he goes on this rampage, right? Uh, now, again, it's going to get rough for a second, but if you get to the tail end, you're going to really like it. Uh, he, he kills a couple of angels for sure. He fights David. He kills David, uh, the angel of, as David. He fights Michael, uh, the archangel. He kills Michael, the archangel. But the good news is, right, they're angels already. Right and God and Jesus are all powerful. Still in this universe, they're all powerful. They come back. Right, right. They don't die for real. They're all coming back at some point. Okay. So it gets to the point where he finally comes up on Jesus. Right, and he's heated and he fights Jesus. And they're throwing down for a little bit. It's really hard, but Kratos has to win. But but it's about to get better. Kratos has to win. Right. Okay. Once he start once he starts to win and 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 kind of beat Jesus, just kind of. All of a sudden, Jesus, you know, because Jesus and God are all powerful, right? All of a sudden, Jesus shows out. Boom, he shuts everything down. He's like, no, nah, look, man, I've been being super cool with you, and I'm trying to tell you it wasn't me. I didn't do this. He, he just he shuts everything down, makes Kratos weak as mess, shuts him way down. He's like, I tried to be cool. You wouldn't listen to reason. He said, what it was is Satan took the shape of me or one of my followers, and he killed your son. He's trying to take over our world. Also, blah, blah. You know, obviously, you've got to, it's rough around the edges and you got to doctor it up and make it good. And he goes, Now I can show you where that guy is if you're, if you're still that angry about everything. And then he is. And then he goes and fights Satan, right? And then at the tail end, uh, you can make it so like Satan, uh, you can make it so Satan kind of beats Kratos, right? Because you still want God and Jesus to be all powerful. You want it to be a good end story for the kids, right? Because again, the end game was for them to give their gifts to God and Jesus anyway. So what you ha what happens is he goes to fight uh, Satan in this case, and he's doing okay, but then like he's not doing okay at all, right? Even a little bit. Now at some point in the story, Kratos uh, killed his wife and kid after he was possessed by Ares, after he was uh, mentally confused by Ares, the god of war at that time before he was the god of war. You take and uh, once he starts losing, and he's never he's never really like asked for forgiveness for all these things he's done, you know. As he's being beat by Satan, what does he do? He repents. And God and Jesus show up. Wah! And they wreck house. They wreck the whole house. And I I, I and I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a good, cool little story. You can get so many cool fights out of it. You get such a good uh Christian uh twist on the God of War mythology, which would be awesome. You you show Christian mythology to a whole bunch of people, not mythology, Christian uh what's it called? Uh, Christ, not mythology mythology Christianity. yeah you show christian i don't i don't i don't some people say christianity it is, is mythology and i'm not in that party i believe god and jesus truly exist and they saved my life and my soul and and i have a chance to go to heaven because of them but you show christianity to a whole mess of people that otherwise would not normally see it and it's in a super 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 cool realistic ish way and I think that would just be awesome. All of a sudden, they want to hear more of the stories in the Bible. They want to know who that guy David is that they fought. They want to know what my, uh, Michael is. They want to know about how strong really God and Jesus are. They want to see those stories, and I think that would be awesome. I think it would be so cool to see. And that's where I'm at on that. And I, went, I got pretty long-winded on that. <laughs> you thought that one through. I have. I've been thinking on it for a while. Because, like, you don't you don't want him to go and do – you don't want him to go do really good because, like uh, – that it's just not possible based on the God and Jesus that we're told about. And then you don't want to offend the people that believe in God and Jesus. You know, you want you want the kids to be able to actually buy the game and their parents approve of what they're getting. And uh, literally, Kratos repents for everything. And then it's like, once he repents, they like, they cleanse him, you know, because right now he's white and ash, you know, because, and you know what the ash is on his body? It's the ashes of his wife and kid. He carries that forever and ever and ever. He repents. Bam. God and Jesus wash him away. All of a sudden, he's just this super jacked dude. And, wow, he could fight Samson. He could fight David. He could fight Goliath if he just wanted to. There's tons of demons in hell that he could fight. Uh, and instead of getting like like in the, in the games, he normally gets powers from like Zeus and Odin and yada yada. 
So on his trek to fight Jesus, he can get powers from, you know, okay, the guy that was acting like he was the good guy, right? And then once he uh, has those stripped away by Jesus, because Jesus shows him really what's up, he can start getting powers from, like, Michael, powers from Jesus, power from uh, the seraphim, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's cool, man. I think it could turn into a cool thing. But uh, it's uh, also a touchy subject for people, so, it, you know, yeah. might, might not never happen. Yeah, it's definitely, I don't know. Sounded cool though. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I, I, I've played the game before. It's been years and years. Um, I play. I mainly play with my kids. Okay. If they want to play a game. Or what something. do they play? Uh, like Jason, the younger ones play Fortnite and Roblox, which I've never played. Fortnite's yet. pretty cool. Though. But I play Fortnite with the kids from time to time. And then do y'all play the hiding games on Fortnite where you like you pretend you're a chair? No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure they have. So there's know. like a game on there. It's called Hide and Seek or something something like hide and seek but you can uh so like you know there's chairs and walls and everything and you can take the shape of things and then you just try not to move and wait while people come by and you hope they don't shoot your chair and then like it, it's cool it, it's hide and seek it's uh it's pretty neat what else do they play um my oldest boy he plays a lot of uh call of duty okay um almost everybody first likes person call of duty shooter, right yeah. now Leah. first person shooters i just like um, zombies that's all I like on Call of Duty. We play, we play. I play Call of Duty with him. Play a lot of it. Well, I say a lot. I played yesterday, and I think the last time I played before that was the weekend before. I don't have time to play it anymore. No I play, one does. Get on and play for an hour or something. That's what sucks. Is like trying to find the time. I like story games. It sucks trying to find the time to get into the story. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. I like playing from the story. It's a good escape, mm-hmm. especially if you're stressed out. I love it. I um, play. I play Final Fantasy a lot. It's my jam. And uh, I never played any of those games. So, like, for me, I was a nerd growing up, and that's really mostly how I learned to read. Because growing up, it was like you had to read, and it felt like I was in a book, you know? So once I started realizing I was reading and I was in the story, you know, by reading it, I'm the main character. I really took to it that way. And then I just never stopped playing them. I, I'm a PlayStation guy, uh, Squaresoft, you know, through and through, uh, forever. I'll always play them. Final Fantasy VII, the remake just came out. It was all right, you know. But I'm looking at the original, you know, through rose-colored glasses. is actually a lot better than the original as far as the way it looks and feels and plays. And But uh, there's just something about the way the first one was. And, then, like, they've changed some of the story, which is, like, that's not what anybody wanted. And then, uh, but part two is about to come out in February. I'm going to take a day off work and maybe two days and try to <laughs> try to run through it on the weekend. As long as I've got the vacation time, you know. Yeah. Uh, try to just hang back and run through it. I like to save my sick days for when mm. I'm not sick. I try, man, I hate it. Cause like, well, I got, I got the flu. Uh, so I got, we took three or two days off. We were supposed to go to the Smokies for a little pre Christmas trip with our buddies. We split the room and stuff like that. And, uh, the day I got off, uh, the week, uh, the week before that, the week, the Tuesday before the trip, I got, I was going to get off. I was going to take off Friday and go up Thursday night. The Tuesday, Kata got sick. Wednesday, Vicky took her to the doctor, found out it was flu on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday night, everyone was sick except me. Had the time off though. So I went ahead and took it. Wife needed help. I kept the house clean, oh, yeah. stuff like that. I was trying to just be helpful, be useful, you know, cause I'm the only one not sick. Never got sick. They all got better. I went back to work the following week. The following weekend was Christmas. We get off that Friday for Christmas. I think. That Friday. The Friday that we got off for Christmas, yeah. The minute I got home, I was sick. Sick all through Christmas. Had flu. Right? No one got sick. Um, I got, we got done with Christmas. Uh, cause, and I know I was sick because me and Vicky had that Friday. Uh, we had a babysitter and everything, and we uh, I think they still got babysit, but it was hell for us to get out of the house and even do anything. It was awful. Me and her, we still went and had a drink together just because, but I was dying. Um, the following week uh, was New Year's. Uh, it was supposed to be Kenna's birthday on New Year's Eve. That's the youngest one. She's two, too legit to quit. <laughs> and, uh, and we... Uh, uh, they all got the flu again, second time. Got it again, son. Yeah, we got, we, we stayed sick. Um, it went went through. I think my daughter come home with strep, 
and then it's probably pretty loud. Oh, that's cool. It sounds cool. Um, just put the buffer key back in. So wild to me. That um, makes it shoot more. Doom, doom, doom. No, it's it's just like more of a, uh, it's just like a spring. Okay. Um, but yeah, she got sick with, uh, um, strep, and then. My son, my oldest boy got the flu and then she turned around and got the flu and then it ran through the house. Oh, good. And then I was the whole time I didn't get sick. I was just like, oh, this is everybody's sick. Hey. Say hi. She's like, everybody's sick. My wife got sick. All six kids got sick. And I was Goodness. just like, oh, it dodged me. But then like a week after everybody gets better, it's like the weekend after Christmas. Or right after my mom's family dinner, uh, Saturday after Christmas, I went yeah. home and I got sick. The drop. And I stayed sick for... Like I feel like two weeks and it would like, like a walking pneumonia. Wouldn't wouldn't I, get away from you either. Uh-uh. I think I caught everything that they had for like two weeks. That's insane. <clears throat> bit hoit though. Bit hoit though. She'll she'll say bit bit hot though. But she says bit bit hoit though. <laughs> bit bit hoit though. Can you say bit hoit? Tell say bit bit hoit though. You want to press a button? Hit this button. This is a. This is Kata. Hi, doing. Hi, doing. Hi, you doing? Uh, this is like if if someone says something stupid in a debate or an argument. <laughs> if someone really very clearly loses an argument. You lose. Good day, sir. If someone calls in like they just can't stop talking, right? They just can't stop. Calm down. Calm down. You know, because that'll keep them calm. Uh, you heard the. Uh, this is Randy Savage. Cream rise to the top. Oh yeah, the cream of the crop. Oh yeah, the macho man. I got a pretty good macho man, Randy Savage. Uh, with Queen Elizabeth uh, and the kids. Uh. Oh, what do you need? Drop that. Can you hand me that? You're uh. Right there by your foot. I'm having the hardest time getting your pen back in because it's bent at the end. The macho man got you this pen, man. Uh, this, what what's bent? The little pen that holds this holds this in. It's bent, so it's like I'm probably gonna have to break out some tools. Here you go. Throw that away for daddy. How long do you think we've been on here? I have no idea. Like 30 minutes, maybe. Hour and a half, boss. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. You'd be fine at a podcast. <laughs> You'd be fine. As long as I can clean the guns. <laughs> no, I'd be fine. Do something to take my mind off of being on camera. Oh, yeah, brother. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hit uh, the 30 second timer. I'm going to cut you. I'm gonna... Hang on, hang on. Shh. I'm going to hit that timer that I was on. I'm going to go to the restroom. That little 30 second heater. Uh, I'm fixing to have to go anyway. Okay, I got you. Well, we'll call, we're going to call this today. And what we'll do next time is we'll plan ahead because I didn't know you was going to want to hop on the camera. Well, uh, I didn't know either. Oh, it's okay. I'm not much of a it's in cool. front of the camera type person. I got to pick your brain. You're a very polite person. Uh, if you hang on, shh. If you're looking for a home, or you're looking to sell a home. Uh, Dustin Bailey, realtor at Patterson Realty LLC. If you need some home repairs done, whether it's home repair, lawn care, everything in between, veteran owned and operated out of where? Fort Payne. Fort Payne, Alabama. Call Bailey and Sons Handyman Service at 256-609-9244 or 256-609-8491. But what we'll do is we'll advertise for them a little bit on the grapevine a little more because he's doing me a favor by helping me clean my firearms. And then uh, we'll get him on again on the Alabama grapevine on the Facebook page. So we're going to get you some views on your stuff. I think that's super, super important uh, as far as advertising goes. I'll keep these also. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't you know that?